Okay, so I'm gonna talk about what's new in TBB and why it's in one API. So TBB, in case you're not familiar with it, it is a C++ library for simplifying threading. Uh, it is an open source project. So as part of one API, we are changing the name of the Intel-based product version to be called one TBB, but it's the same, it's, a, it's continuity, it's the same project. And it will continue to be open source. Uh, there will be some things that are actually gonna be deprecated over the next year. And if you wanna go to threadingbuildingblocks.org, you can find out what those things are. But for the most part, it's because the baseline language for one API is C++ 11. So we've taken the opportunity to modernize some parts of TBB, assuming now that C++ 11 would be available. So you can learn more about TBB at threadingbuildingblocks.org, or you can get a copy of the book or get, go to uh, A Press and get a free digital copy of the book. So TBB is a collection of building blocks that you can use to create scalable threaded applications. So it includes high-level parallel exe execution interfaces like parallel loops, like parallel four, parallel reduce, parallel scan. It also uh, includes more complex algorithms like pipelines, task groups. There's a flow graph API for expressing data flow and dependence graphs. These are all built on top of the TBB, on top of TBB tasks. TBB is a task-based programming model. And these tasks execute on top of the TBB scheduler, which is a work stealing task scheduler. Over time, TBB started back in 2006 was the first release. And it's pretty widely used in the industry for threading. Uh, over the years, we've added hooks because it's gone into, it's, it's increased its uh, presence in different domains that required tighter control over performance. Like initially, TBB was not something that people in HPC were using, but over time, as people embraced C++ in HPC, um, it became more common in HPC, and so we started adding some performance hooks that were necessary uh, for people who were very important in tightly controlling performance. So there's some things like scheduler controls, parallel loop controls that have been added over time. And part of what we do in the book is actually um, go into the context and the details of those features um, to help people use them. There's also things like concurrent containers, like hash tables, queues, vectors, that are not only thread safe, but they're thread friendly. So things like standard queue, for example, you have to do multiple operations like check, is my queue empty? Then you can get uh, the head of the queue, and then you can pop that. Um, and you really need to do all those three, three things atomically, right? So in TBB, we have a queue where there's a pop if present function. So you get all of those three operations all in one atomic call so that it's not only thread safe. In C++, the standard library, you can make each of those three calls thread safe, but you'd still need to do some locking around your queue. In TBB, it's all just one call and you get the behavior you want. And all of these things are built on top of things like our scalable memory allocators and our synchronization primitives, but these are also available if you want to just use those directly. So how does TBB fit into one API? So one API, we have our applications, we have middleware and frameworks, and then we have direct programming, that's DPC++, and then we have our API-based programming. So these are things like one MKL, one DNN, and TBB fits actually in in some ways in all of these. So TBB itself is available as a library. So you can use one TBB. It's included as part of one API. Also though, if you're doing direct programming using DPC++ and you target the CPU, the threading underneath the CPU device is actually gonna be implemented using TBB. So this is the way that we're creating composable, scalable parallelism on the CPU. So TBB itself does not execute on accelerators. It's executing on the host. But there's also one thing that we've added over the last year or so are these asynchronous mechanisms in TBB that are good for coordination with things that are executing on accelerators. 
Now, if you're using just DPC++ directly, and you're using um, accessors and buffers, all that stuff will just be hidden from you. But if you're writing part of your application using TBB directly, you can make use of some of these features. Like in our flow graph, we have an async node, which allows you to offload, to do asynchronous communication with an accelerator. You could, for example, embed some code that uses DPP, DPC++ there and, and allow the TBB worker to not be blocked waiting for something to return from the accelerator. You can do that in our flow graph with an async node. We also have resumable tasks now in TBB. So you could use TBB. If you wanted to, you could use a flow graph to coordinate your overall application and include in the nodes DPC++, or you could mix them in your application. And because what's executing on the host in DPC++ is TBB, you're still going to have a composable application. Also coming in 2020 are resumable tasks. So even if you have a task in a TBB parallel 4, you can call a suspend and, pa and pass a, a lambda expression to the suspend, and the suspend will receive a tag. So you can do something like in your lambda expression, you could offload something to an accelerator, do some scheduling of some communication. And then later, using this tag, you can, and that task then suspends, and the worker thread can go do some other things. Later, you can call resume from another thread to restart that task where you had suspended. So these are new features in TBB that help it uh, work better with accelerators. When we talk about a TBB task, the amount of work that we suggest needs to be in a TBB task to overcome scheduling overheads is about 10,000 cycles. So these are not very lightweight things, but they're lighter weight than some other tasks, like OpenMT tasks, for example, would be heavier. So resumable tasks are coming in 2020. NUMA awareness in TBB. So we've done a lot of work in trying to, for HPC specifically, provide features that can let you match OpenMP performance by taking away some of the composability of TBB. So we have, for example, static partitioners that mimic the static chunking of OpenMP. We have features that allow you to isolate work to NUMA nodes. And uh, so you can schedule, let's say, a parallel for specifically on threads that are pinned to a particular NUMA node. So these kind of features are also things that we're doing to enable HPC developers with TBB. OK, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the book. So as I said, you can get a free copy at A-Press, or you can buy physical copies at A-Press. All the code samples are on GitHub, so you can just uh, use, uh, try them out yourself. If you have any uh, questions, comments, or you discover there's something wrong with a sample, we'd love to hear about that. Um, the, the book is actually targeted to both new and uh, experienced developers. So James Reinders wrote a really good preface, which is really like an introduction to parallel programming, right? So it goes over the concepts of parallel programming, um, what is data parallelism, why synchronization is bad, all of these sort of high-level concepts that uh, someone who's new to programming, uh, parallel programming might need. Uh, so that's all covered in a preface. Then we have a part one of the book, which is the basics of TBB. So this goes over the algorithms, the containers, but doesn't talk about the performance tuning hooks. So we have developed TBB to make it easy to use. And if, if you are not um, obsessed with performance, you may be able to just read the first part of the book and be happy, because we've tuned TBB to perform well in most situations. The second half of the book which starts here, so it's a lot of the, the book, is really talking about the advanced features. So these are things for how do you control the number of threads that are used? How do you isolate work? How do you deal with priorities? Um, how do you do, deal with non-uniform memory access? All of these things that basically this part of the book came out of the fact that as uh, TBB, as developers of TBB, and uh, people who worked with customers, we were answering a lot of questions repeatedly about how do we use these features 
we had documentation, but um, we wanted to put it all in context of why those features existed, good, give good examples for how to use them. And that's really what that second part of the book is all about. And then we have an appendix, which is sort of the history. And then here's James's second mini book, which is, is really, it covers all of TBB in sort of a compact, here are the interfaces, um, if you wanted like a short explanation of everything. So it's, it's actually a great resource there at the end.